All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to give you an application of inner products by showing you how to construct an orthonormal basis of an abstract vector space. So in this, in this video, consider the vector space V, which is just a polynomials, set of all polynomials, let's say defined on minus one, one. In general, so set A, B, for example, you know, x squared is in it, or like x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1, or other things, you know, x to now 9001, whatever. And this is a vector space because you can add polynomials, you can scale or multiply polynomials, and in particular, let's turn it into an inner product space by uh, introducing a dot product. So here, let f dot g just be the integral from minus 1 to 1 of f of x, g of x, dx. And what are the Legendre polynomials? It's just an orthonormal basis. Okay. Orthonormal basis. basis, let's call it Pn of V of V and there are certain conventions because there are many orthonormal bases in this fashion but let's just normalize it such that P is uh, the values of Pn at 1 is just 1. Pn of 1 is 1 and I think if you take different inner products and different conventions, you get other ones like you know, Laguerre polynomials or other fun things. All right, and I just want to show you, well, it's just the same process as what we've been doing for Rn. Same, namely, here what we would like to do, we would like to take this basis, the standard basis of, of P, so this is the standard basis of V, and we would just like to apply the Gram-Schmidt process on this. And I will not do it the general case, because that would take like hours, okay, maybe infinite time, but uh, I will just show it to you for the first three ones. So I will just find the first three Legendre polynomials. Well, we got to start with something, so let P0 just be 1. So we just start with one vector, and indeed, uh, P0 at 1 is 1, so that works. All right, so 2 wouldn't work, for example. And then, now we would like to find P1. Well, how do you do it? Just as before, well, you have your vector 1. And you would not like to take another vector. Take this vector x. And again, just like for Gram-Schmidt, what we have to do, we have to find a vector perpendicular to 1. So first, let's find the projection, ortho orthogonal projection of x on the span of the vector 1. So let's calculate x hat. And again, the formula is the same. We would like it to be a multiple of 1, so it's something times 1. And to do that, you just dot x with your vector 1. x dot 1 over 1 dot 1 times 1. Except what is dot is just the integral from minus 1 to 1 of x times 1. So which is x, and this is the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 times 1, which is 1 times 1, and well, it turns out this integral, in this case it's 0. We're just lucky, so it's 0 over 2 times 1, which is just 0. And that's fine, it just means, you know, like this thing is just the origin, and, um, and now the next thing is, we just want to construct your second thing, you want to construct uh, your vector that's perpendicular, which is just x minus x hat. So let's do that. So x minus x hat, 
is then just x minus 0, and that's x. All right, so that would be a candidate for P2, but if it's, you just have to check that at 1 it's 1, well, it turns out yes. If you evaluate x at 1, you do get 1. So P1 of x is uh, just x in this case. If it's not 1, then you just multiply it by a constant to make it 1. This is what's called the normalization. Okay, good. So you already had that. Now you want to continue. So you have your vector 1. You have your vector x, which now is perpendicular, because you know, this is p0 and p1. And now you would like to use another vector, in this case x squared. And what we would like to do now is construct x squared hat. hat. So again, just as before, and this time I promise you the answer isn't as trivial. It's still so trivial, but not that bad. So x2 hat, again, what is it? It's a linear combination of your two vectors, 1 and x. And the way you do this, you take x squared and you dot it with 1, and then 1 is so happy it dots itself. And you take x squared and you dot it with x, divided by x, dotted with x. And remember, dot just means integral. So integral from minus 1 to 1 of x squared, divided by the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 squared, times 1, plus the integral from minus 1 to 1 of x squared times x, which is x cubed, over the integral from minus 1 to 1, x times x, so dos x, which is x squared times x. And you evaluate those integrals, so an antiderivative is x cubed over 3, and then from minus 1 to 1, it actually gives you uh, 2 thirds, Integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 is 2. So this thing times 1. And then the nice thing is x cubed is an odd function. So this integral is just 0. So it's just 0x. And that just becomes 1 third. Good. So x2 ha, x squared hat is 1 third. And now to get your third thing, you just subtract. So let's do x squared minus x squared hat. And you indeed get a vector perpendicular to uh, your space. So x squared minus x squared hat now then just becomes x squared minus one third. But here's the problem. If you evaluate this at one, you don't get one. You get two thirds. So in particular, p2x is a constant times x squared minus one third. Because again, you can multiply this by any constant and still get a vector perpendicular to it. And to find that constant, use p2 of 1 is 1. So p2 of 1 is constant times 1 minus one third, which is 2 thirds times c. And you want this to be 1. So c is 3 halves. And this then gives you your uh, p2. Uh, let me see. I ran out of space, but maybe we like to do this here. So p2 of x is 3 halves times x squared minus 1 third. And if you want, it's 3 halves x squared minus 1 half. And then to find all the other polynomials, you just continue. So then you do x cubed hat, and you dot it with 1, with x, and careful, not x squared, but with this vector. And it kind of becomes a nightmare after this point. So I think this is a good time to stop. But if you, um, if you calculate this, I believe, uh, you should 
get something like that. I read this on a table somewhere. You get uh, five halves x cubed minus three halves x, etc., etc. And those are useful. I mean, basically to get an orthonormal basis of polynomials, and it I think it helps you to get you know. Uh, Anything that's nice of orthonormality, you can do that. So if you have a polynomial, you can actually write it as a nice linear combination of those ones. And I think it's useful either for interpolation or for integrating functions. But I'm not a numerical analyst, so I don't know much about that. But anyway, I, what I wanted to show you though is even though we're dealing with more abstract spaces, the process is exactly the same. The formula for Gram-Schmidt is exactly the same. The only difference is instead of using the dot product, you use this formula here. So again, it looks scary, but it's not that scary. All right, so if you like this and you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.